I was born in Philadelphia. It's not exactly the pinnacle of healthy eating. I had a sweet tooth. My mom used to like take an orange and cut it in half and dip it in sugar. Hi, mom. Now, it was out of love, though. It was out of love. Great. So to kind of break free from that was something that took a lot for me. I mean, I married a pastry chef because I love sweet stuff and I love her too. So it's right. a win-win, chef. Let's get to the topic here. Okay. So sweet how we sweeten it up? It's definitely something I like. And I try to take pride in making good, flavorful, sweet desserts here, but still keeping them healthy. In my cooking school earlier today, I made chocolate cupcakes. People hear chocolate cupcakes and they're like, what the heck is this guy going to really be? What are they going to taste like? But you can make a good chocolate cupcake and still keep it very healthy. Everybody likes you here, Vince. You're well, I like everyone here. I always, get, I always get birthday cakes for everyone, so. Oh, that's, so it's payback. Yeah. I thought you for sure was going to get me a Nobody got me a birthday cake on my birthday. When's your birthday? It was May. We'll mark it on the calendar, Kara, mm. okay? May what? 16th. Hey, Google, remind me May 16th is Kara's birthday. Oh. All right, Kara's birthday. There this you go. will be for May 16th, 2023. Repeat, At one time. repeat yearly. That way I'll just... Can you tell it to repeat your ear? That's it. All right. I'll remind you on... So what are we just, what are we talking about today, Kara? Today, we're going to talk about top questions that Pritikin guests ask us on a regular basis. One of the questions, um, I'm going to put it in, in, in what I like to put it. This is not exactly the way they ask it, but they kind of say, Kara, where's the beef? <laughs> because we don't get a whole lot of protein here at Pritikin. And, um, you know, there's there's this concept of, I think, out there trending to eat more protein and less carb. It seems to be um, a very common way of eating these days um, for weight loss. And, mm -hmm. you know, why people come here a lot is is to lose weight. So they get a little bit confused when uh, we talk about the palm size uh, protein piece. And that's about once a day at dinner. So. I'd like to tell our guests that um, there's plenty of ways to get protein other than animals. And, you know, one of the things that we're really known for here at Pritikin is eradicating cardiovascular disease. So people, when they come here and their cholesterol levels are elevated, one really great combatant to that is to include more plant-based protein into the diet. And you can get plenty of protein without any cholesterol or saturated fat. And you, my friend, are really good at creating new ways of introducing plant-based fats to our guests because um, we we talk a lot about tofu and they're like, oh my God, I didn't know I liked tofu, but I like it because I went to Chef Finn's cooking class, which I think yesterday, yeah. weren't you doing that? Or is that today? That was today. That was today, okay. Did you just say plant-based fat? <laughs> Apparently, I did. I think you did. Plant place protein here. Thank is... you for paying attention, Vince. I actually <laughs> did not get a ton of sleep last night, so my brain is not all there, but I meant to say plant based protein. Yeah, but well, I mean, there's a new plant based fat you're telling me about it we can use here. I don't know, but yeah. I, 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 I'm interested. But so plant based protein, we're all about here, right? So whether that's coming from soy, that's coming from beans, we're definitely going to use it and lots of different things that we're going to focus on here to get that into your everyday lifestyle. People here, plant-based, a lot of people graduate towards tofu and think, oh, they're going to serve lots of tofu there. Right? And we do serve tofu here, whether we bake it, whether we grill it, uh, we pan sear it. There's lots of ways you can cook tofu and make it taste delicious. Some people struggle with the texture of tofu, right? Tofu right. is going to take on with a flavor, whatever you throw into it. It's like a blank canvas. So other things that we like to show people here that have more meatier substance is something like TVP. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a brand uh, called So Soya. So Soya Foods makes three different varieties of TVP, which is textured vegetable protein or textured soy protein, just made from defatted de soy flour and water. The most common way to find it at most grocery stores is the ground version, which you can use in a chili and a bolognese sauce. You can use lots of different things, but you're going to find that that's the most common one that we, most we're going to see. And the so soya foods has like big chunks of it. You, you walked in a class I was doing today yep. with, the, with, the, with some uh, people that were doing a private class. They were doing a, uh, they had asked to make a sweet and sour mango so soya, uh, which is like big chunks. It looks like chunks of chicken. Like if I told you it was chicken, you ate it, you would think it was chicken. And, and it's a really way to kind of trick people into thinking that, you know, uh, this is actually meat here. And it's a way to kind of trick your brain thinking, hey, this is actually, you know, this is just something I'm, I'm used to. You know, whereas tofu is tofu. It's never going to have that meatier texture right. like so soya or the TVP really provides. That's so true, so yeah. I tell people, check out that stuff. It's, 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 it's wonderful. And certainly, you know, we do serve animal protein here as well, right? It's not something we don't allow. It's just like you said, we try limiting it to about four ounces of cooked animal protein in a day. 
And you're saying like the palm size, hand, right, right? Right, right, Deck of cards, like volume size, that's kind of what it usually equates to. But, you know, people ask us, you know, well, why, why, why do you have to only limit me to, to, the, uh, to, to fish? You know, most often we try to grab it, grab it toward, gravitate towards fish as that animal protein option. And, 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 you know, and, and you'd probably be a better person to explain why are we choosing fish over more land-based proteins? Why we That's choose fish question. over chicken or over, 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 over beef? Yeah, so, so um, one of the things that I would say, um, by the way, our recommendations for fish is about three times a week, whereas chicken um, is only once a week. And uh, one of the reasons why we suggest that is that some fish have very good sources of omega-3 fatty acids in them, um, including a, salmon is like a star, star food that it's, we make here. Yeah, it's, and it's, our, it's our star it's for our, sure. It's yeah. like fish and then oatmeal is the star breakfast. We, yeah. So the, part of the reason why the, the salmon is the shining star is a lot of people like it and they're used to eating it at home. And also it has those omega-3 fatty acids, which are essential fatty acids, which basically means that you have to get them from your diet. You can't get them from your own self. So, um, you know, salmon is a great form of omega-3 mackerel. Sardines are actually really good sources. Um, and so... The chicken, even, you know, we definitely talk about lean chicken, chicken breast versus a chicken thigh, take the skin off. All of those things are ways of decreasing saturated fat and cholesterol in, in the food. And um, so we still recommend them, but we just say, hey, go low on it. Because as, as you know, and I know that um, our bodies don't need as much protein as we actually make may think. Oh, for sure. And you mean you don't need a 10 ounce cheeseburger? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So um, I actually had a guest that I was talking to this morning and she was telling me that she feels like she doesn't get enough protein in her diet and she's concerned. And so I just started asking her questions of different foods that she was eating. And she includes a lot of legumes in her, in her diet. She eats a lot of soups and things like that. Yeah, and yeah. so I said, the truth is, I, I think you're doing just fine. Oh. Um, but she was concerned and I just sort of kind of alleviated her fears a little bit. And then she felt really good about the fact that, you know, she thought that she was undercutting it a bit. She actually was doing a great job. So, well, I mean, there's lots of different ways you can kind of just sneak protein and things. And like you said, you don't even know you're consuming it. So you really, quinoa, for instance, as a grain, don't realize how much protein it's it has. It's actually you know, a so. great, I love quinoa for that reason, um, because it, it has properties of both protein and carbohydrates. So, yeah. When you're trying to tackle both of those at the same time, it's a good alternative to something like brown rice, which is more absolutely and try using base. and try using red quinoa. I, that's what we oh like yeah, to use you here. like the red yeah. And you know, toasting it a little bit before you actually cook it as well gives you a little bit more nutty flavor to it. But we make quinoa salad. We'll use it as a side dish. We'll make a we have a broccoli quinoa patty. You know, a little burger. Love, so yeah, you know, there's yep, lots yep. of things you can do with, with with something as simple as quinoa. Um, you know, just to kind of expand more onto the fish options. Um, just to give people more ideas of what they would have if they came here. We have a catch of the day. You know, and you said that we recommend having these options, you know, fish, you know, throughout the week, maybe three times, right? Right. But we do have it on our menu once, once a day as an option, you know, but we also always provide a, a, an alternative uh, plant-based option as well. So if you were to come here, you would see that it is something that we recommend only having every other day practically, you know, but we, you, can, you can have it, you know, once a day while you're here and you might be exposed to snapper and bronzino and mahi-mahi and wahoo uh salmon definitely arctic char you know there's great fish out there halibut and sea bass wonderful and we would have that you know but people ask us about what, what's the nutritional difference from some fish right you said you know br briefly but people hear you know seafood and they think it all kind of is all just one one bag right so right. you know shellfish for instance is you know, i'm sure you already know higher sat you know higher in cholesterol higher, higher in cholesterol. sodium even right so like shrimp being one of those that are just Something we try to limit it to being only once a week if you're going to have it, right? Right. Same place as, as the chicken. We put the shrimp. Um, but just, you know, one little thing that I like to add in there is that these are suggestions. We have a pretty good um, planning of eating strategy. But when I'm working with the clients, especially people that are not used to eating fish as often or are not used to eating as much plant-based as they <clears throat> were at home, um, I pretty much tell them better is better and progress is progress. So um, it's not like you're going to go to jail or something like that if you don't follow the exact guidelines of Pritikin, woo, woo, right? We're going to come and lock you up. <laughs> I, no Tara joke. <laughs> Another guest asked me yesterday, he's like, Tara, are potatoes legal here? <laughs> I said, <laughs> absolutely, potatoes are legal. And he was really afraid of eating the potato because his his um, blood sugars are a little bit elevated. He's got some insulin resistance. And he was told by 
um, the doctor, you know, stay away from anything white. And I just kind of said to him, listen, High flour, hecuba. I mean, there's exactly. Lots there's a lot of white foods that are really good for you. And sometimes it's just an easy thing to say when yeah, yeah, you're yeah, off yeah. the cuff and you yeah, don't yeah. have a lot of time. The most important thing that we like to um, focus on here at Pritikin is um, focus on the whole food, right? Mm -hmm. Something that is whole, it's not refined, it's not tainted with, and um, you're getting all of the nutrients out of it. So, so just know that um, it's not really about you have to have this and you can't have that. It's really about trying to be better and do better. So if you yeah. want to include, if you never eat fish and all of a sudden you're having it once a week, that's wonderful. And eventually maybe you can slip it in a second time. And that happens all the time. People tell me here, you know, chef, I didn't know I even liked seafood. It, but you've, you've made me actually realize I actually do because you're serving it so frequently here. Yep, I've tried it true. in so many different ways and I actually enjoy it now. You know, I've heard that all the time. And, you know, j just talking about, now we say limiting it to that four ounce protein intake if it's you know, the animal protein, but some people are like, hey, I'm a meat eater, I wanna have some more th options. Incorporate it in a whole day as that four ounces of cooked protein. It doesn't have to be one shot, right? So like cumulative adding up, you could perhaps have some salmon that only adds two ounces into a salmon wrap, you know, and then right, you're adding right, full right. of other, you know, maybe some lettuce and some veggies and stuff like that, but only two ounces with that actually in that wrap. And maybe for dinner, you had like a bolognese sauce or a chili that had some ground chicken or ground turkey and it added up to being that that, that overall I intake. I think that's great. You know, and that's how you, people can kind of get a little bit more of that meat throughout the day if that's what they wanted, but you not know, overall consuming too much of it at one time. Right, you just kind of flour it in there. Yeah, we we kind of it. say that your, your, your animal protein is more your accessory. It's not the main the main stage of the meal. Correct. So it's Correct. it's a really good way to kind of add it in there. Um, one thing that I love that we do here at Pritikin are the crunchy chickpeas and you can yeah. put them on the salad. So again, there's so many ways that you can add the protein in without really totally feeling it, but but it's in there. So, so our croutons, yeah, the croutons, crunchy, little, yeah. the crunchy chickpeas. Yeah, that's yeah. a that's a big seller over here. It kind of has like peanut almost texture. So yeah, it works. Yeah, great. no. And then you put the the yummy spice on it. It's really, really good. Yeah, our pretty all purpose spice can be, you know, something that you, adds a lot of flavor to anything. I mean, and it's so simple you can go ahead and make at your house granulated onion and garlic and a little paprika, coriander, a little bit of oregano and parsley, you know, in certain ratios. But you can play around with it. You add lemon pepper, you add you know, cumin or something like that, you know, whatever kind of other kind of deviations you make. You make you know sauteed vegetables, potatoes, your 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 grilled chicken just tastes that much more flavorful and without using the salt. Without the salt, and that's that's another big thing um, in terms of the salt. A lot of people seem to think that when you take salt out of the food, the food tastes really plain. But I I, I have to say that the food here is anything but plain because we just experiment with all kinds of spices and herbs and and things like that that really really jazz it up and. Um, we literally have a whole entire refrigerator full of herbs in the I, back. I, mean, I like know it, you do. Uh, it's a whole entire refrigerator. <laughs> so, which I mean, is, it's, which it's, is awesome. Yeah, but we use a lot. I mean, we use lots of things that we're trying to use to enhance the flavor without using salt. I mean, salt is technically a flavor enhancer, but ways you can build more flavor is with spices, is with citrus, is with you know herbs. You know, and definitely we, we're trying to play on all those aspects of it. Yeah, and actually, um, what's also cool about all the herbs and spices not only do they add flavor and take away the need for the salt, but they actually have a lot of health benefits associated with them as well. So it's like a win-win situation. There, I sure. mean, when I have that oatmeal in the morning, I take that cinnamon and I just want, want, want <laughs> a lot of cinnamon. When I go, when I go into the line and I- I like your sound effects you do wah, as you should. <laughs> but um, this morning I was getting my oatmeal and um, you know, I, I, I pretty much do it the same way. I put my oatmeal, I throw lots of berries in it. And Don't then let they, James put cinnamon, because James, um, or James will load it no, up. No, it like, was Anna this morning, okay. and she, she was eh, like this. I said, no, a little bit more. And she's like, oh, I like that. And I said, no, a little bit more. And then she really piled it on, and <laughs> I was just like, that's perfect. Now you're doing the cinnamon challenge at your, while you're eating the your oatmeal. The cinnamon. And by the way, side note, cinnamon actually can help stabilize blood sugars. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, you gotta eat a lot of it for that to happen, but it's true. Right. It's true. Right. Well, lots of um, lots of cinnamon on your oatmeal. Lots right? of cinnamon on my oatmeal <laughs> to make it taste sweet and delicious. And um, cinnamon's great for blood sugar. And, and 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 something we use to enhance our oatmeal here as little accessories is some cooked fruit. We have a whole little oatmeal topping. Oh, the little you know, oatmeal topping. But it's basically like they're basically pie fillings. You know that you know, they're uh, unblended jams. So like you know if I was to cook blueberries down, uh, which is what we have there blend it up, you have like a blueberry jam essentially, right? But I mean, if you were to just leave it like that, it's like a blueberry pie filling, but it's great to add onto yogurt, add into uh, onto oatmeal or, you know, and don't just cook oatmeal for your hot cereal, right? You just, 
brown rice farina, there's polenta. I mean, there's steel cut oats. There's other things you can use. Besides, quinoa cereals too, I've seen. Right? There's quinoa yeah. flakes. You can, you know, there's, yeah. there's lots of more variety. Yeah, and one day we actually was telling some guests earlier, well, chef, what? There's so much variety. Why don't you serve it here? I said, well, we have, but nobody, you know, everyone's like, so you hooked on the oatmeal. They didn't want to have the oatmeal all the right, time. Right, right, right. That, you know, one time I actually didn't serve oatmeal one morning. We actually went and served just a whole, you know, big kettle of uh, polenta. And people were mad at me. They're like, where is my oatmeal? Like oh, banging no, on I... the table. I actually had to go pot, bring a pot of boiled water real quick and get oatmeal out by like 730. Or I was going to have people go ballistic <laughs> on me. So, you know. Force them to try is one way, but it, it, you know, expand, your, expand your horizons yeah, a little bit. Yeah, try, try other things. things. Um, another question that I get a lot of times is, can I eat fruit if I have prediabetes or if I have insulin resistance or if I have diabetes? Because, um, you know, there's a lot of fruit going on around here. We have fruit in the morning. We have fruit um, around near the gyms. Yeah. And um, we're encouraging people to eat whole foods. In addition to that, by the way, there is just as much vegetables in those coolers as there are fruit. More vegetables. So, or more <laughs> vegetables, so that should say something to you. Yes, fruit is totally okay when you have diabetes, but it is something that you need to be careful of. And I always say fruit needs friends. You don't wanna have it by itself, but you wanna have it with a little bit more fiber. So you grab a little crudite of vegetables with it, or maybe you add it to your uh, Greek yogurt or something like that. But Fruit, I think, gets a bit of a bad rap, and I just want to put a little plug in. Fruit is full of fiber, <laughs> it is full of water, and it's very satisfying. But the truth is, if that you have any um, insulin issues going on, you don't want to overtax that pancreas and, and have a big old fruit bowl for breakfast. But if you want to top some on your oatmeal or your yogurt or something like that, it's an absolutely great idea, and yeah. I'm all in on that. She's an advocate for fruit, folks. Absolutely. I'm an advocate for fruit, but I do, you know, I do tread lightly with certain people. So that's the other thing that, you know, um, I think it was Tuesday when I was doing the calorie density lecture. There's this big picture. Um, uh, it looks like a Panera sandwich. It's got like really <laughs> thick bread in it and it's got some turkey and lettuce and tomato. And one of the guests was asking me, well, um, if I, if I just eat half the sandwich, is that okay? And, and the truth is, is that sitting in a room full of people, I can't blanket answer that question. Is that okay for me, right? Yeah. There, 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 are certain, there are certain things that you have to know about a person, a little bit of history and things like that. So um, we strongly encourage that if you have specific questions that you wanna know specifically for you, um, we can address that in, in a session or after when you go home and you have questions. That, that's, that's what I think is one of the secret sauces here at Pritikin is being able to follow the people when they get home because they, they, they don't even know what the questions that they're going to have yeah. until, until they're there. It's a way to fine tune and, everything. And we can, we can help tweak it because you know when we're doing lecture, I'm, I'm speaking to a general public. I'm not speaking specifically to that particular person. And you really need to kind of um, my suggestions are not blanket suggestions. They really vary dep depending on yeah. the health status of the person, how active they are. Um, you know, do they have high cholesterol? Do they have high blood pressure? Do they just need to lose weight? There, there's so many different variables that exist. So uh, we really need to personalize it for the person. For sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. one thing I would just chime in and say, like we talked about cooked fruit earlier briefly. You know, it, it, if you're somebody who has diabetes, it probably would say cooked fruit is probably something you would stay away from, right? I mean, as opposed to having the whole fruit if you are going to have, the, you know, the, the fruit. So, Well, that's an interesting question because that comes up a lot too. I have another slide in one of the lectures that shows a big apple. And then it shows the applesauce, okay. right? Yep, yep. And, that, and, and, and the truth is, is that there's many ways to make applesauce, right? You can just heat up the apple and let it... Let it. What do you, how do you, how do you do how do you make your apple? I'll tell you one really interesting way to do uh, a, a, an apple sauce type of thing is doing a baked apple, right? Like if oh, you bacon, if, not putting it in a saucepan. Well, well, we do. We for our apple compote, like we, today, we have a crispy apple turnover. We take a whole wheat tortilla, we cut it in quarters, we take some apple compote, roll it up, and we bake it with a little splendid and cinnamon on top of there. So it's real nice. Yeah, crunch it's and, one of my favorites, by the way. Yeah. Uh, but it's, really good. it's an easy way to cook the compote. You can use you know, fresh apples, slice it up, add a little apple juice, concentrate, a little lemon, and a little bit of water, 
but the apple juice concentrate gives a little bit more sweetness as opposed to using like brown sugar or regular sugar. True um, that, yeah. And that's totally optional to use it or not. I mean, you don't have to, but you can certainly enhance the flavor by using some more cinnamon or something like that. But the baked apple uh, variety is what we'll do sometimes is we'll take a, um, a melon baller and kind of core out the inside of the uh, the apple. Like say if this is the apple, mm -hmm. take it from the top and make like a, a like a little tunnel from the top. And then we'll fill that up with a little bit of combination of half uh, apple juice concentrate and a little bit of water. Uh, and then stick a cinnamon stick in there and then bake it in the oven uh, about 350 degrees. Oh my uh, God. Just a baked apple. So simple. You know, Granny Smith is probably the best one that works. Oh yeah? Uh, because, Not Honeycrisp? I mean, if you cook a Honeycrisp apple down, it's like a sacrilege in my opinion. You oh know, really? They're so crunchy and sweet, fresh. That, you know, oh, you'd rather just eat them. You'd rather just whole, eat them. Yeah, it'd be better. I got you. Right? I got but you. also, some apples cook better down because the starch content. I mean, Granny Smith and Golden Delicious are probably the best apples to use if you're going to cook them down. So, Good to know. Yeah, I, I, I would know use that. those to get nice and tender, and that way you can eat the whole thing, skin and everything. Um, you know, maybe you have to kind of make sure when you're scooping out the inside, you're getting all the seeds out as well. Uh, but also, kind of gives it where it cooks from the inside out, and it gives you that little sweetness when you kind of get in, into the uh, the center part of it. So. I think I love that. I'm so glad that we'll you taught me that. We'll make you a baked apple here soon. Okay. We're for my pair. birthday. For my for, birthday. For your birthday. Which in, is long ways away. In, in six months. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You told me today. I put a reminder. I'll, I'll, rem I'll remind you that I want a baked <laughs> apple for my birthday. And the cinnamon stick will be my candle. There you, How's that? There you go. There you go. And people, uh, people ask us, you know, about sweet stuff all the time. And yesterday was my birthday. So. Yes, it was. You old man. Here I am. I'm old. <laughs> yeah. People ask me, how long have you worked here, Chef? I always tell them over 10 years, because I say, what if the true, true number is 15 years, then it makes me just seem like I'm I'm old. Anyway. You started <laughs> when you were 10, though, right? When I was I 10, know. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, when I was 22, actually, yeah. So, so they ask you a lot about satisfying that sweet tooth. Look, I was born in Philadelphia, right? It's not exactly the pinnacle of healthy eating. And I was just doing a class today with people from Philadelphia, and they all laughed when I said the same exact thing to them, because it's not. And, and it's, it's not like the poster child for healthy eating by any mean, when I first started working here, right? I had a sweet tooth. My mom used to like take an orange and cut it in half and dip it in sugar. Wow. Hi, mom. Yeah, so like <laughs> that's what she used to do. Not, I'm it was not out talking, of love, I'm though. not was talking grapefruit. Love. Like I'm talking an orange, you know? And like, so it was like, I was raised with stuff where like, I had a very sweet palate already. So, yeah, you yeah. Know, so to kind of break free from that was something that took a lot for me. I mean, I married a pastry chef because I love sweet stuff and I love her too. So, you know, but either way. It's a win-win, chef. Uh, Let's get to the topic here. Okay, so sweet how we sweeten it up. It's definitely something I like, and I try to take pride in making good, flavorful, sweet desserts here, but still keeping them healthy. In my cooking school earlier today, I made chocolate cupcakes. I mean, people hear chocolate cupcakes, and they're like, what the heck, is this guy gonna really be, what are they gonna taste like? You know, but you can make a good chocolate cupcake and still keep it very healthy, you know? Now, just because you're healthy doesn't mean you can have 20 of them, you know? And that's that is where it kind true. Of gets that's a, little... a really important point to, yeah, to, exactly. to be making. It's and, and like... that's people get to get a little misled. They're like, oh, but they're healthy. I but, can just have But five. Chef told me it's okay. Yeah, so... Or Kara told me it's okay. You guys are always when, trying when, to get when, us in trouble over here. When we first, when we first <laughs> made this cook, cupcake recipe, I asked Lon when he was helping me develop the recipe. And he was, says, uh, you know, Lon, our other dietitian here. And he says, um, let's serve zero cupcakes. So that's. <laughs> Let's serve three What's cupcakes. I said, I said three. No, he didn't say zero. He said um, one. Okay, uh, one. So we settled on two. Two okay. small cupcakes. So that was the a good compromise. Serving. But like, you know, first of all, serving size, right? How you make it. We're using Splenda. We're using a little bit of low-fat cream cheese in there as opposed to using buttermilk and using butter and oils and sugar. So, you know, there's ways you can make healthy tweaks and alternatives to keep things flavorful and keep it healthy. Um, but, you know, we try to serve our desserts in the afternoon as opposed to as serving the, it at dinner time, right? Yep. And if you're having your sweet stuff at nighttime, it just sits in your belly there at the end of the night right. you, before you go to bed. And then you know? it could and, elevate the blood sugars in the morning a little bit. So so instead of having dessert at night, we'd go for a walk, right? We go for a walk, Go for, yeah. a, for a little sunrise, sun, not a sunrise. Sunrise, What sunset. is wrong with me today? Sunset. You're all over the place walk. today, <laughs> 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 Um, well, you have a place to be here, certainly. You have you do your mindful eating lunch in here soon. I right? have the mindful eating at one o'clock, and we do talk a lot about the fact that once the sweet kind of touches the tongue a little bit, for some people, it sends this huge rush of dopamine to their brain, and um, they, you know, they don't have the two cupcakes; they'll have the four or five yeah. cupcakes. So, well, I admit that I had a little. Little, I didn't make my wife made me a whole cake. You know, it was like the same recipe we serve here as the cupcakes. It just made into a cake, and I had probably a little bit more than two cupcakes. Maybe, you right. know, it's in, your in birthday. That volume size, it's so. your birthday. It's yeah, your it birthday. birthday. It's my birthday. 
So the other thing I wanted to mention, by the way, um, as a side note about your chocolate cupcakes that you make, you you use a very high quality cacao. Yeah. And um, cocoa berry is cocoa the brand. berry is the brand, and it is one hundred percent cacao. So cacao is it has no sugar added whatsoever, and it's actually um, a probiotic and an antioxidant. So it, there are some there are some goodness to your cupcakes. In addition to tasting to food delicious, <laughs> by the way. Um, but back to the that sweet tooth thing. So the question that I like to ask the guests a lot, and this is why I say I, I don't make any blanket statements. If you know that there are certain sweet foods that once you put them on your tongue, you cannot stop eating them, the yeah. suggestion is to find something else yeah, because yeah. there's always substitutes that you can have instead that your that your mind and your body can tolerate. So you still have that sense of sweet, yet it, it's not going to run wild and and um, totally derail everything. Mindfulness and, is definitely you know coming into play, and if you can absolutely. have that self control. You know, some people, you know, we, obviously there's some things that people just crave and love and things like, you know, whether it be a little sweet candy or a snack, and they feel almost deprived if they can't have that anymore. You know, and it almost feels like, what's the point if I can't have that thing that I love? Sometimes you really just can't, maybe whatever it is, you know, because it's so unhealthy. But it could be something so simple. You have a little couple small, like for me, I'll admit it. I like peanut M&Ms, right? Here it is. I told the truth here. And like for me, though, I'm going to serve myself a small little ramekin of those you know, and not eat from the back, you know? I might put four or five in a small container right, and right. be satisfied with that. Right. And some people can't do that. Ex and that's, and that's, that's and my that's point. Where, you know, if you your mindfulness you. and your self-control isn't there, I'll tell you what, 10 years ago, it wasn't there. And, I, and, and one thing that helped me lose weight was just kind of getting more into that kind of, you know, wrangling that self-control and being satisfied with what I was having and not feeling like, hey, I could eat, like, I'll go refill this thing five more times, you know, right, and I, right, what's the right. point, you know? So, Doing something like that, as simple as that, kind of portioning things out, can make all the difference of kind of knowing, okay, this is going to be satisfying to me, and I shouldn't kind of right over as long it. right as long as you know, like I I can handle this, but that I can't handle, and we deal with that a lot, you know, especially when we work with couples or something like that. Um, the 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 one spouse might say, you know, my husband is fine; he can eat two chocolate kisses and call it a day, but once he brings out those chocolate kisses, I finish the bag. Yep, yep, right? yep. So, that's it. Yeah. So. Different strokes for different folks, but um, the most important thing I would say about that is know thyself and be true to thyself, and and, that's, that's and know it. and and the mindfulness thing, like you said, it's before you react, you can sort of take a step back and say, "Am I actually hungry? Like, do do I want this? What is the reason why I'm doing this?" And kind of, yeah. it's okay to talk to yourself every once in a while. I'm a big fan of that. I'm talking to myself all day, and uh, you can come up and... with really good solutions, but. But the mindfulness and the pause and, and, and taking a step back and thinking about it, I think, is um, really, really helpful well, um, for I, a lot of people. I think having the behavioral health aspect of this program definitely helps people kind of you know, get to that point where they, they feel a little more comfortable leaving, you know, and understanding, yeah. you know, having, you know, that mindfulness and having that little bit more self-control of keeping things kind of more in check and not right. feeling, you know, and, so overwhelmed. And also, you know, not feeling guilty about every little thing that they're doing. You want to you want to have some self-confidence. So, yeah. Yeah. um leaving here like tiptoeing around food and being afraid of it is not really what it's about. It's it's finding good food relationships, it's finding confidence in knowing what you can and 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 cannot do based on your history, right? Expect the expected. If it happens it if you ate two chocolate kisses and then you ate a whole bag of chocolate kisses time and time again, expect the expected to happen <laughs> again, right? So then we just kind of come up with something something new. Yeah. So yeah, sure. we can figure it out, guys. Just come talk to us. Exactly. Right? <laughs>